Today, I have the pleasure to interview Thomas Hoffman, a seasoned real estate agent, 25 years in the business, a real top producer. Tom have had years of over $180 million in sales. And the, the information, the experience he's about to share in the episode, it's amazing. He talks about the importance of focusing. He says, in life, you don't get what you want, you get what you focus on. He also talks about the importance of having a team. He mentions, Orlando, I don't know any top producer that doesn't have a team. So it's important for you to see what he talks and how he builds a team to produce at such, such a high level. He also talks about positioning. What well, we talk in coaching so much, number one step in coaching, positioning. He says, I'm not an expert in the city, I'm an expert in certain areas. And for those of you who work with international clients, he's an expert only in international clients. He positions himself as an expert on international clients, meaning he works exclusively with international clients. When he's talking about his practice and how he works the international market, he says, I don't put more than 20 to 25% of my business in a particular country. Very, very important. And finally, he talks about education. He says, I need to be an expert. I don't want to be a fake agent, which is one of the best things he talked about in the interview. He says, I don't want to be a fake agent. I want to be an expert. So I make sure that almost every single day I do research for about an hour, research about the market, research about real estate. So I hope you learn and enjoy so much for this interview as much as I did. Without further ado, I leave you with Thomas Hoffman. Make it a very, very productive day. Take care, guys. DowntownDoral.com, a true modern metropolis where business and pleasure mix together. Envisioned by the renowned developer Armando Codina, Downtown Doral is located next to the world-famous Trump National Golf Course. When finished, it will consist of 10 residential towers designed by renowned architects like Sigur Suarez, Carlos Ott, and Architectonica. It will have first-class shops, restaurants, and a charter school. The first tower is already in construction and to be delivered in the first quarter of 2016. Its second tower, called 5300 Paseo, with a total of 219 units, starts at just $280,000 and has an anticipated delivery in mid-2016. Downtown Doral, an elegant lifestyle and a safe place to call home. For more information, visit downtowndoral.com or call 305-392-5800. That's downtowndoral.com or call 305-392-5800. Welcome to another edition of Top Producer Miami with the Montiel Organization. Today, I have the pleasure uh, of having Thomas Hoffman. He's the broker, owner, principal, of Hoffman International Realty. It's a, a real estate company uh, in Miami since 1990. Uh, here's a, the, the main point and what I wanted to have uh, Thomas here today. And first of all, thank you very much. Thank you for, for inviting me today. Uh, the, re the main reason I have you here today is of your experience, your success, but especially working with international clients. And we know that Miami, it's, it's an international city and we have a lot of agents, Hispanic agents and uh, that, uh, that are trying to make it in this business. Obviously, you're not trying. You have world <laughs> trackers, uh, financial and, and business success. So first of all, I want to start by, and that, that's the reason I, I, I wanted uh, Thomas here today. Thank so uh, how long, Thomas, uh, tell me about, about your business life. How, how long have you been in the business? The business and real estate business. Yes, real estate business. I've been in the real estate business over 25 years now. And uh, we started uh, from humble beginnings. Okay. And okay. Actually, I was involved in a uh, development company that hired me okay. to do uh, basically financial consulting because I'm a finance major. Okay. My training is in finance. And uh, I was hired to basically uh, get the loans for this okay. company for land acquisition. And this is how I got my 
I started real estate. Okay. And so where are you from? I'm from an agent. I was born in Venezuela. In Venezuela, Venezuela. Caracas? Caracas, yes. Okay, yes. so we're from the same city. We are from the same city. Okay, all right. So we have many uh, agents mm. that mm. are uh, watching that are from Venezuela, or they're from South America, of course, and that want to specialize in, uh, in, you know, in, in, in working with international buyers. So mm. we want your insight today. Before we, we get started, I like always to uh, ask a question, very simple question. Uh, a quote, a personal, you know, a quote that you uh, are inspired by, and if you want, if you want to share that with us today. Sure, sure. Uh, let me see my notes. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I know you're joking. No, no, no. I, I, my, you have my, a... my, my quote uh -huh. is this: You have to be uh, persistent and consistent. It's consistency and persistency is omnipotent. There you go. You will overcome any obstacle if you're consistent and persistent. So you have to stay with the mm -hmm. with the game plan. You have to have a goal, and you have to stay with it, basically. Exactly. Now you had, you you are you've been in business for twenty five years. Uh, yes. Obviously, very successful in real estate. But, and you said your background is in finance. But I know you also uh, work in a in another industry, similar yes. industry in sales uh, for many many years. Can you share that with us? Sure. Um, during the uh, late eighties uh, and nineties, mm -hmm. I was involved with uh, what is known as multi-level marketing. Okay. And um, without getting into the specifics of the names of yeah, the companies exactly. and all that, but I was involved for over 15 years. Wow. And it gave, it gave me a great, uh, it gave me the ability to learn from other people, to have a different experience. And although we were not as successful financially uh -huh. as in real estate, <laughs> we, did, we, okay. did, we did develop uh, relationships all over the world and we developed uh, you know, uh, a, a, a level of thinking, a level of consciousness mm -hmm. that we didn't have before. Mm -hmm. And I, I, can, uh, I can tell you that that contributed greatly to our real estate business. Okay. So the experience from that other business was great in improving our real estate mm -hmm. uh, results. And by the way, that, that results that you're talking about, we were before we, uh, uh, before we had this interview, you were talking to me and we were sharing your numbers, some of yes. your numbers, with, without being very specific, but you had a great year in 2006. And uh, Correct. if you can share that with us and uh, how, how the year was, sure. and if you can get into the specific, I'll appreciate it. But no, it's not, not a problem. Not a okay. problem. Besides, it's a few years past. It's not like <laughs> but I know, I know you're very close in 2014. We're getting, we're but, getting back in track. Yes. Yeah. But uh, yeah, because of the knowledge and the, 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 the wisdom, if you will, mm -hmm. that we developed from this other industry, we were able to put some some very uh, some very uh, knowledgeable and hardworking people together as a team, mm -hmm. and in 2006 we passed a milestone. We had never done this, but we uh, we sold over 180 million dollars in real estate in Miami mostly. Mm -hmm. uh, although we we worked in some other markets a little bit, we worked in New York and Panama also. Okay, but it was mainly here in Miami. There was a record number for us there. so so understand that that w who we have here today especially for the agents that work with international clients and that work with buyers we're working with a very very experienced and and, and a, uh, accomplished real estate agent to the uh, owner and broker uh today so uh i know that you didn't learn that by yourself i know that you have Correct. mentors Correct. and uh, you were talking to me about one specific mentor so Yes. Who was that person? Well, um, during the you know during my lifetime, I have had many people that I've learned from because we we, we very early on in life we somehow get an attitude of learning, growing, and changing, and this has been learning, growing, growing and, and changing. changing. And this has been I a noticed model. that you said it in a, in a and it, it's okay. in, in a sequence exactly. So and the learning. sequence is you want to learn, grow, and change. Okay. Because if you want to have more, you can be the same person. Exactly. Right. Okay. So you need to evolve and learn. But you have to have some role models. You have to find other people who have results or right. have more knowledge than you do. You have to be humble enough to be able to learn from them, mm -hmm. of course, if they're willing to teach you. And I have had several mentors through, uh, through my life, but I can remember one specific one, and he was uh, the guy who guided my, us the most mm -hmm. on during this uh, multi-level marketing process. His name is Carlos Marin, okay. and he's a great coach. He still coaches today, okay. and uh, we maintain you know, a relationship. We still keep in touch. Okay. But uh, if I could attribute to a single person change in my life, mm -hmm. would be to him. What did you learn from Carlos? I know, I know many learn, things. Learn, learn, change. Okay. No, no, I but, know many things. No, no, but yeah. no, well, one know. specific thing that... One that specific did, takeaway. The takeaway, write this down. If okay. You know. And it's basically this. You don't ever get in life 
what you want, but you only get in life what you focus in. If you want to attain something in life, you got to focus on that particular uh, result, goal, target, call it whatever you want to call it. Some people call it dreams. Uh, it's whatever you want to attain. You stay focused, you follow, you develop a plan, and you stay with the plan. You don't change the goal, okay. but maybe you have to change the plan. And See, a lot, of people, uh -huh. a lot of people put their plan Mm -hmm. Right in in, in, in stone, sand, in right. stone, right? right. Mm -hmm. And no, you want to put your goal in stone, okay. and your plan in sand. Okay, right? <laughs> so right. you can change ah, it, right? Okay. As, the, okay. as the times change, because technology evolves, people right. change, circumstances change, politics change, but your goal should never change. Your goal should stay the same, whatever that is. So we learned that uh, All right. during those times, and we applied it. And uh, you all should have uh, developed some dreams and goals that you want to attain. And so, you gotta keep those in front of you every day. So in life, you don't get what you want; you get yeah, what you focus, focus on. on. Very, it. very That's good. It. And you put your plan on the sand, correct? And your goal in stone. In stone. Very, very good. I like that. I like, really like that. Now, Take away. Take away. <laughs> I'm writing down here some notes. So, uh, what the typical day looks like for uh, for Tom Hoffman? Typical day. Okay, we uh, usually wake up at uh, 6 a.m. Okay. I don't know why, but I naturally wake up at that oh, time. Oh, you don't, you don't use an alarm? I don't use an alarm. You're a lucky I, person. I, You're I, a lucky I person. I wake up, I don't know, I get uh, too excited about life, I guess. Okay. Six in the morning, I'm up. I usually take an espresso. And what about I, if you wake up at 6.15? I'm sorry. It's a, no, I yeah. mean, there's always a little bit of room for But you don't mind? You, you don't no, I don't mind. I don't get stressed okay. over that. At what time do you go to sleep? Uh, usually midnight. Okay. So I sleep right. six hours. Okay. Good enough for you. You know, when I'm traveling, it's a little different. But okay. here in, at home in Miami, it's uh, usually I, I wake up at 6 and I go to bed at 12 midnight. Okay. And uh, typical day, you know, the first hour for me is, you know, having an antioxidant, having an espresso, and I sit down and check my emails to see if anything is urgent, you know, text messages, so on. Respond to the urgent messages and then take a break and just go exercise, you know, uh, maybe go to the gym, go walk, and, uh, you know, just relax, have breakfast. And I really, really start my day at 10 a.m. And by the way, here in Miami, I don't know uh, for those of you that are watching this, but in Miami, in real estate, nobody really starts before 10. Right. It's kind of hard to get people to That's meet in Miami. You. In Miami, unless they meet for breakfast or something. Right. But the real formal business in an office or or even if you go to a sales center in a project, there's no one there before right. 10. So, and I try to avoid the traffic. My office is in Brickle. Mm -hmm. so, uh, the Brickle financial di district for those the financial the people that don't know yes. Miami. And, uh, yeah. and there's a lot of traffic from where I live in the south. Mm -hmm. So I kind of avoid the traffic and I, yeah. I take advantage of the day. Mm -hmm. and, uh, oh, you're going on the opposite. I'm right? coming north right. because I live mm -hmm. south. Right. And uh, so, you know, the day goes like that. And uh, from 10 to 12, there's meetings. Usually a lunch mm -hmm. with someone. I make it a point. You may want to take this one mm -hmm. for you. I make it a point to have lunch with somebody every day. I try never to be having lunch Good by point. myself and usually is with somebody that's an agent, a project or a client. And I'm always trying to be, because you have to have lunch anyways. You might as well have it with somebody and make it productive. Now that you mentioned that I had a mentor many years ago, uh, I was in, 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 uh, in banking and he said, you never uh, go to lunch with a coworker. They won't buy anything from you. <laughs> so, that's you, an hour way of looking at it. So you gotta go out with clients and yeah, yes. absolutely. So that's sometimes yeah. we go with with coworkers. Not right. co I call them colleagues, people right. who work okay. in, the, in the projects, and you know, right. there's some level of interest in exchanging information or experience. Mm -hmm. Now, you've been in business for a while, successful person. I'm sure, like any other successful uh, person, you had many fa failures and uh, way more failures usually way more than way more. Uh, than successes one specific one that that mark you that that you really remember that and, and, <laughs> <laughs> and, and and how and how you came out what God. did you learn from it very very interesting question i can remember one specific one okay and this is actually years ago i mean we're talking 20 years ago and uh, i remember our, our 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 market you know we, we basically went into a recession here. You couldn't sell anything. But the, the worst thing that happened was that I had two very good clients mm -hmm. who were developers who were buying land from us. Mm -hmm. And they both went under the same month. Oh my God. And uh, that taught me a lesson never to depend, you know, not to have a large part of your business depend on a single or two right. single individuals or companies. And uh, we really, really had a hard time because, you know, these people were doing millions of dollars of business with us. And overnight, they disappeared. 
So wow. we had no more clients. All of a sudden, I would say 50, 60% of our volume just disappeared overnight. And uh, so we had to, and, and we were going into recession, so it was that much more difficult. So that taught me something called diversification. Yeah, and there you go. You know what? I was, I'm coaching, still coaching an agent uh, that closed 112 transactions and 130 something transactions between 2012 and 2013. Uh, but most of, more than 95% of those transactions came from one investor. And that person chose another agent. Uh -huh. And the business is now, it's, she doesn't have, this person doesn't have a business, Correct. has an employer, you know? So it's very important to, uh, to make sure that you have a, a well-diversified a book of business, you know, that uh, is correct. Of, of clients. In our in our current structure, if I may tell you, mm -hmm. in our current structure, we, we deal with different countries. Right. And at any given moment, if one country becomes more than 20% of ourselves, okay. we really start doing marketing efforts in the other countries. Very, very important We point. try to balance mm -hmm. our, our, our client base mm -hmm. as much as possible because we don't want to be depending on one country right. or one client or like you said, like you know, somebody becomes your employer. Right, exactly. You're listening exactly. by yourself, but huh? somebody becomes your employer. It's very good. Now, what what did you learn from that? Okay, now you, you learn to diversify. Correct. Right. And uh, how do you come out from that experience? It was a very, very difficult experience that made us reevaluate what we were doing, who mm -hmm. we were, where we were headed, you know, we reevaluate all, all of our structure and you know our plan basically. Right. We had to reevaluate all of our plan and, and, and change it, and, and we became uh, more conscious that we needed to develop a team, and we didn't want to depend so much on one single market or a single source of business, and uh, just create a different level of awareness. And that's business. something that we, we say in coaching. Uh, our, our, we, our first, uh, our first uh, blueprint is you know, positioning, and positioning yourself in terms of understanding who your client is, uh, the area you want to be working, and, and the type of property you want to be working on. And it's, uh, we say that by focusing in one area, you will create many opportunities in other areas. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't mean you have to exclude yourself. It means that you have to work one, one market at a time. And then you can have two, three different markets develop at the, sa at the same time. Uh, but it's also it's important to focus, like you said before, mm -hmm. uh, but make sure that you are well diversified through the process of building your business. Correct. Very, very important. So what do you struggle the most in a daily basis? And I asked you this question before, and uh, <laughs> I, I think we share the same. Uh, I think most people who are watching this uh -huh. will probably agree with me that we agents struggle the most with people who are not honest with us, uh -huh. uh, especially buyers. You okay. know, the, the, the <laughs> motto is buyers are liars, right? <laughs> okay. Not all of them, okay. but, but there's a tendency for uh, for clients sometimes not to be totally truthful. Mm -hmm. And the reality is uh, we can help them more if they open up themselves more to us. So that's part of our struggle. And the other one is people who don't return calls and, mm -hmm. and text messages. And I try to be the kind of person who will return a call, a text message immediately. And right. if I'm in a meeting, I would hit those buttons in the right. iPhone that says, right. I'll call you later, you know. 10 minutes, yeah. Yeah, people are aware that you are, that you are, that you are aware that they call, you know. Right. And, and I try never to leave anybody like not calling them back within an hour or two hours. I right. want to always be, and, and, and it makes a difference because if I could tell you long term in our business, what has made a huge difference is because people can trust us. Mm -hmm. And part of that trust is because when they call you, you call right. back. Right. And you're not uh, either hiding or you are not, uh, you know, well, listen, sometimes you can be flying around mm -hmm. and I mean, you can't return the call at that point or a text message. But I always try to respond as soon as I can. Always, always. Because it just builds on your credibility and your credibility builds your business. Right. It's as simple as that. Exactly. So that's going back to the, uh, to the agents, which we can change that. I mean, if they, the agents don't want, to, uh, they don't want to return the calls, we can do anything about it. But it's also very important uh, when you talk about the clients uh, that some clients are liars, some of them. Correct. Uh, we need to understand, and we're very, very strong in coaching when we do that, it's that not everybody's our client. Correct. And uh, it's important that we sometimes fire our clients. And uh, life is too short. And uh, it's short. And uh, fortunately, there is enough business in this town to do business with the people you want to do business Correct. with. So make sure you understand who your ideal client is. Make a profile of that person and, and try to work with that person in specific. So success story. Any success story in particular. I know you have many, but well, one in particular. and, and uh, 
and what did you do to for you know to for, in, in that case to to make it a success story it's um, well one uh, we have many success stories okay. and we have many failure stories of okay. course, but the success stories i can remember one in particular that's very interesting and this is why it's important to, you know to uh, to follow up and, and, and to just you know be open and uh, i remember my insurance agent recommending a client mm -hmm. not for a commission just you know referring someone and this gentleman happened to be somebody who is a CEO of an oil company. And this gentleman bought a property from us and I built a relationship with him and uh, we developed a trust. And the next thing I knew was he was referring to me one of his partners. Okay. And his partner referred me another partner. Okay. And the other partner Those referred me sweet. another partner. And then it just kept going and going and going. And uh, <laughs> at the end of the story, we sold about nine properties in two years wow. to these people. And some of them multi-million dollar properties because a trust and a, a credibility was developed and established with the first person and he kept recommending and of course we kept following up right. and said do you have any other friends that would like to buy or invest in miami you said a key word which is follow up there you go follow up follow there up. you go never ending follow up and, and and that's something that we we stress very much in coaching the only reason people do business with you or you do business with people is why because you trust that person correct but in order to for somebody to trust you you need two things number one relevant content that knowledge right correct. uh the expertise of the market and second and but most important more important it's constant communication constant contact follow up with that person follow it's extremely extremely important as a matter of fact uh what we teach is that only 10% of the people, Thomas, if, if you analyze your business and mm -hmm. you go back and say, okay, I closed 100 transactions, 120 transactions on the, over the past 12 months. And if you analyze those 100, 100 transactions during the past last mm -hmm. 12 months, you will find out that less than 10% close with you within the first 90 days of contacting you or you contacting those people. Over 90% of those people were through what? Through follow-up, effective follow-up. Mm -hmm. Most agents that are struggling is why? Because they are working with the people that just wanted to buy today, and that's less than 10%. Correct. Correct. So you need a system to follow up. And I think you were mentioning before we got into the camera that you had a very good system of following up with your clients. And Correct. that's what makes a real estate business successful a system to follow up and Correct. a plan. Written in sand, right? <laughs> right. A plan. Uh, they have to have a plan. <laughs> they have to have a plan. But it's very, very important that we understand that that's our first principle in coaching. If you understand that 10% of your clients will buy within 90 days and the other 90 will buy later, later, up to two years, you'll have a great business. I have a story on that one. Go ahead. I just remembered. Yeah. I have a Brazilian client who was referred to us and he came to see me. I remember my office in 2008 or nine. Right, you know, we're hitting some hard times here, the crisis and everything. And this gentleman, for some reason, was very distrustful. Okay. But we were able to develop a trust over the years. And he would come to Miami, he would bring me a bottle of scotch as a present, okay. I would go to lunch, and he would not buy anything. Okay. And I would really not offer him too much because mm -hmm. he came to my office, everything was there, if he okay. was interested. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we just made friends. Okay. Four years later, mm -hmm. he buys couple of apartments from us here in Brooklyn. All, right. All cash. Okay, there you go. The fifth year. Four years later. Four years later. Right. The fifth year, he buys a penthouse in Miami Beach. How much? Uh, 1.2, 1 1.3 nice million. Nice commission. Nice commission. And Sorry then, for asking, but I like, no, I like no, facts. No, no, I like no, numbers. No, 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 so, no, no, okay. no, but it's very yeah. interesting because now what happened on his first two apartments, I called him one day. There was a great deal. There was some building being liquidated. I called and said, look, we have something very interesting that I'd like you to consider buying into, but we have no time. I mean, I have to ask you to run. He says, how fast? He said, can you be here tomorrow? And he took the plane from Brazil. I called him like at 3 p.m. He was at the airport, came and bought the two apartments Imagine. the next day. Imagine. But that only happened because he trusted me right. for over four years of developing a relationship. If you don't have that trust, Somebody would not get on a plane and do that. Exactly. So we ended up selling that. And then recently we sold them another apartment in the Edgewater area. Okay. So it's number four. Mm -hmm. And now this morning we're talking, this is I remember, we're talking two more. Mm -hmm. So the same person is doing multiple right. and multiple transactions 
And of course, because they trust you, they refer other people. Right. Most of our business, I have never advertised online. Right. It's been referral, right. word of mouth, trust. It's just been 25 years of this. And, and it's, it's much easier to develop. We have the technology now. Maybe 20 years ago, it was much more difficult. Correct. Uh, we didn't have the technology, the computers. We didn't have, I mean, phones were very expensive. Every right. single call to Brazil or Venezuela or South America, you would think before calling. Correct. Um, I people didn't have the cell phones, right? I yeah. mean, it's, it, it was a different era. But now we have so many systems that we can put in place for literally less than $100 per month that if you're not utilizing that, you can compete much less Correct. dominate in this business. So you need to have a plan, and that's something that we focus yeah. very much on in, uh, in, in coaching, is you need to have a plan for the 90% of, of your clients that are not buying today. And if you do not have a system Correct. and a plan, it's almost impossible to make it. But if you right. do, the sky's the limit, and especially in South Florida, where the topic is real estate. Like I said, if you go to New York, people talk about what? Finance. Correct. If you go to Hollywood, people talk about show business. Correct. But if you're in sunny South Florida, we're in real estate. <laughs> we're in real estate. So if you have a business, if you have a system, and if you have a plan to implement it and automate it, it's you know the sky's the limit. All right. So very well said. Now, how would you describe your sales technique? Tell me. Okay. Your sales. Some people are. Uh, for example, in my case, I say, uh, in, in my belief and my opinion, is that cold calling is completely dead. Completely Correct. dead. Uh, people are way too smart uh, for cold calling. I the agree. technology and you know, once an expired listing yes. at seven thirty in the morning, it's getting twenty five calls. It doesn't Correct. really matter how good you are at calling expires or for sell by owners. It's extremely difficult. Granted, there are some people still yes. doing it and having success. Very few, but there are. Uh, but it's not a way to build. So you want to know my technique or my yes. style? Okay. What What do you prefer? Because to? there's there's a difference. <laughs> okay. you know? I, I have both. both. What about? Okay. All right. The technique. Mm -hmm. I would say that very early on, a long time ago, I decided to become the expert at what I did. There you go. So yeah. I spend a lot of time doing research. Mm -hmm. I meet with people from different projects almost on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. So I'm always, I'm always sharpening my axe, if you will. There you go. That's what I'm doing. I go out and I see projects and I don't have a client maybe, but I'll know everything about the project. And I'll meet the salesperson because I'm saying project because I deal mainly in uh, project in, in mm -hmm. projects and pre-construction sales. Uh, we do some general real estate. Mm -hmm. We are, I would say, experts in certain areas of Miami doing that. If you ask me, for example, if I'm an expert in Doral, I am not. You're not, of course. But if you ask me about Pinecrest or South Miami, I am because yeah. I happen to live there. Yeah, yeah. So I happen right. to know the area well and I've lived there for years. Mm -hmm. But I want to make sure that I know more than everyone that I know regarding projects. Mm -hmm. So if you ask me about a project, most likely I know about it. Mm -hmm. I know the price points, I know who sells it, I know the terms. And this translates into your credibility with clients because when you start talking to somebody, when you finally have somebody in front of you, they know that you know. There you go. And you don't have to paint a picture of somebody you're not. Mm -hmm. You know because you know because you studied, you invested the time. So I would say on a daily routine, like where you were asking mm -hmm. me that question, I would invest probably an hour or two per day easily just investing in knowing about a particular project or a particular and I go to the events I try to go to all the events and I try to real estate fairs I try to be as involved as I can in the business I breathe real estate if you will and that's a common trait for most top producers uh, and most struggling agents say what they don't have what time there you go they don't time. have time to do that but in coaching we're very very uh, you know uh, adamant about it it's Every single day you have to invest, and that's the difference between right. a struggling agent, they see things as an expense, and uh, top producers see it as a what? As an investment. An investment. So we, you need we to invest. We uh, invest. Exactly. We so invest time and we invest resources and money. There you go. Very, very important. So you need to under, they need to understand that you need to plan every day, Correct. practice and learn. Practice, planning, and learning every single day. Correct. So when you talk to your client, not only the client knows and understands that you are an expert on the field, you become the expert in your client's mind, Correct. but you have more important than anything else, the confidence to talk to your client. Correct. I'm on TV every single week, and when I get uh, a topic that I'm not very confident about, and <laughs> I'm in front of the camera, I'm, you know, I'm there every day for the last 11 years, but if I'm not very good at the topic, Correct. I feel it myself, I'm right. not that confident, you know, and that confidence is 
you know, you acquire that confidence by what? By practicing. So it's very, very, investing, very important. Work. Investing the knowledge and investing the time. Yeah. Exactly. And for example, you know, sometimes we travel to a real estate fair mm -hmm. where we may or may not have any clients, but just to learn what's going on there. We invest the time and the money wherever it's needed because it's our it's our living. Right. You know, it's a livelihood. Definitely. Living. And by the way, it's what I love doing every day. So you know, so your technique. Not work, right? So your your technique it's it's being an expert and right. showing that. Correct. And your style would be? My style is not a pushy style. Okay. Uh, okay. <laughs> that you're referring yeah. to that. No. Yeah. I am I am the kind of person that would offer something, okay. back it up with facts, and ask questions. Okay. I would my suggestion, and this has worked for me better when I used to be more the pushy type in mm -hmm. the early uh, uh, part of my life, okay. you know, trying to okay. sell something. It doesn't work as well as if you present facts as an expert mm -hmm. and you ask questions. Right. Such ask as ask questions. questions. There you go. Very important. So what kind of a return are you looking right. for? So why are you buying this property? Right. So how many people so you know in and in fact people don't understand this, but when you ask questions, like Orlando's asking mm -hmm. me, he is actually in control of the conversation. Mm -hmm. Very the person who's mm -hmm. asking questions is in control because you mm -hmm. ask the questions that you need mm -hmm. to ask mm -hmm. to lead the conversation mm -hmm. the path that you want. So my suggestion is, and some of the books that we discussed, and then, no, we haven't covered them. Not yet, uh, we're, yeah, we're, we're going there. That. Okay, but no, no, but it's a very good point, because it's, I, I always say, it's the, the success of, the business, of your business, my business depends on what? On the quality we have with the conversations, on the quality of the conversation we have with our clients. Right. The success we'll have in our business depends on the quality of the conversation we have with our clients. But the quality of that conversation, it's, it's, it's directly uh, affected by the quality of the questions we ask. Correct. So it's extremely important we ask the right questions and keep asking them. And there are five very, very important questions most of us know, uh, but, but we don't know how to use them, Correct. which is, what is it that you want to buy? Where, if you're working with buyers, Correct. okay? Why, 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 where, why, when, and how much? But that, those, those five questions are as important to us as they are for the client. Many times the client have no idea, has no idea Correct. of what is it that we, what he wants, where, how, when, and how much. So it's very, very, very important point. So what traits do you believe, Thomas, that are very, very important for a successful real estate agent to have? When you say traits. Traits and characteristics. Characteristics. Uh, characteristics. In his, well, not only personality, but in his attitude, his actions. Well. Um, I say attitude will determine your altitude. <laughs> okay. <laughs> but don't, don't okay. overplay it because then okay. you don't want to be okay. like, you know, ego is a good thing okay. to a point. Right? Okay. Okay. But uh, being yeah. humble and listening right. is a good right. thing also. Mm -hmm. But I would say that you, uh, you have to be, I, I think there's certain things you need to have, uh, returning calls. Mm -hmm. You need to be on time. On time. There People, mm -hmm. the number one, by the way, complaint, uh, from clients anywhere in Miami is people, agents do not return calls yes. or don't return. That's the number one That's complaint. Number one. So just by you returning, you are already ahead of everybody. Yeah, there you go. You're separating yourself from the pack, but you want to be on time. You want to return calls. Um, I think you should be, uh, you should look sharp. Mm -hmm. You should try to dress right. for Appropriate. success right. appropriately. That doesn't mean a tie. I mean, we are weather. I never wear a tie. I very seldom wear a suit. Um, Today is an exception. <laughs> okay, thank you. Today is an thank exception. No, but, but, but usually, because mm -hmm. see, uh, you can dress appropriately for the mm -hmm. weather and the, the, the clients. Many mm -hmm. clients here that we have, they go in shorts. Right. If you go with a you know a tie and a, and a suit, they're gonna feel uncomfortable, right. and you're gonna look awkward. So right. you can dress well in a casual way, right. and uh, again, you know, you want to have certain things. You want to have a phone that works <laughs> and that has battery and if you don't have a battery backup I highly suggest one make sure your phone is charging them you know little things like that make make sure things work you have a pen you know basics I, I would say basics tools um, and you know and be ready to pay for valet parking yeah, and, yeah. and be ready not to try to park a block away just park with a valet you know you make things to, easier make things easier yeah. and uh, just in general I mean just some common sense you know um, Try to shave. I don't <laughs> shave too much. I shave clothes, but, but now let me ask you a question. You know, if you're a lady, I mean, try to have a, a, a nice demeanor, if right. you will. I would right. say, you know, your nails. A nice presence. Yeah. A nice yeah. presence. Right. You know, it always helps. You've had many wealthy clients, uh, business people. Yeah. 
what lesson, if, if you remember one, uh, that you've learned from one of your clients? One, one lesson for From a wealthy client. Yeah, from a, well, you know, like any client. Any, any you know, client. Even if a $100,000 oh. client, but any, you know, any lesson. I, the, the people that I learn the most are, are my clients. Uh, I, I really, even when I'm, even if, if it is real estate, coaching, or in finance, it's, what, I, I learn a lot from those people. Yes. Uh, experience, especially the experienced one, you know, that are right. older than me, that can teach me a lot of things. So, usually the clients who are very wealthy, mm -hmm. um, tend to be knowledgeable right. and they can teach you actually and sometimes they're not the easiest to deal with because they're very um, demanding they're very demanding and they, they they need to be pampered but at the end it's worth to go right. with the exercise worth to go through because uh, you will learn from the experience yes. you don't learn anything from the experiences where you have no adversity right you only exactly. learn from adversity mm -hmm. so you have to learn to welcome adversity in a way even if you don't like it exactly when it's happening yeah. but in the end you sit down and you say, well, what did I learn from this experience? And usually I would say that I welcome those those challenges mm -hmm. these days. Most people don't. I kind of find it they want, interesting and challenging. They want it easier. Yeah, but not every day. <laughs> Just, <laughs> a okay. Okay. Just a few days a week. Just a few days a week. Now, I know I know you're into reading like myself. I love yes. to read. Uh, maybe because of your background and uh, you know the, the type of business you, uh, you came from. Any book that you would recommend? And if there is more than one, welcome. We are we are in the in the people business, and I think that uh, one of the things that will help you uh, succeed greatly is if you have people skills. Mm -hmm. And not everybody has people skills. Some people who come from different areas of life will have different levels. Right. Of, but in real estate, you certainly are dealing with people more than with properties. It's, yeah. it's people skills. And uh, the the one book that comes to mind that everybody should read is how to win friends and influence people it's an oldie Dirt from Carnegie, Del Carnegie yeah. you can buy it anywhere for pennies today I mean yeah. it's very but it's the one book that can teach you a lot about human interaction um, and if you want to learn how to manage your time and your priorities well there's another book called the seven high the seven habits of highly effective people by Stephen Covey, Definitely. and that is a classic of. Mm -hmm. uh, I think Both Covey passed away. I yeah, he did about two years ago. Yes, but he is the guy. I mean, he's in terms of uh, organizing your life and priorities. What's important? What's urgent? Mm -hmm. um, those are very good books. And if you want to grow your financial mind, mm -hmm. uh, Robert Kiyosaki, yes, you know the, so cat, uh, the rich dad, poor dad was his first book. Yeah. I was shocked when I read that book. I realized what was going on. The second is even better. The, the cash flow. Yeah. Oh yes, yeah. definitely. So those books, and uh, my my suggestion is try to read a book every month. You know, just read 15, 20 minutes a day, because. If you read, you basically are allowing the books to teach you. Exactly. Sometimes things that other people will try to teach you, but you won't allow now, the let, information. Let me, to let me stop in. right there yeah. because I, yeah. I say many phrases about books. I'm a I'm an avid reader. Reader, I, I make it a point to read at least 15 minutes a day. Yeah. And usually, when you read 15 minutes, then you keep going. And then sometimes you read for 30, 40 minutes, but at least 15 minutes a day. And uh, there is a saying that goes, uh, you know, you will be the, five, five years from now, you will be the same person as you are today. But, uh, but uh, you know, what is it? Five years from now, you will be the same person as you are today, with the exception of the people you need and the people well, the books and you the read, books you the read, books you right? Read. Yes. But you said something before the interview that I never hear hear before. That books will tell you things that other people won't tell you or you or won't they, accept they, they, you won't accept right you will not accept okay so books explain that explain books. that to our yeah, audience books, books. Very, listen to this because <laughs> this is very very interesting point i like that so books books uh -huh. have the the capacity uh -huh. the ability right the ability yeah to uh take uh, you know to, to open up your mind and to consider um and allow allow information to come into your mind that you would not accept maybe from uh, another peer or, or another human right, being. Right. And it's very interesting because it allow you you allow the book to to come in and to make you grow. It's so true. It's and, so true. Uh, and and sometimes, you know, in our in our other business, in mm -hmm. the MLM business, we used to be able to uh, influence people mm -hmm. in a good way by giving them a book. If we wanted the person to grow in a certain area, we would pick the right book for that person. And give and it say, to that person. Listen you got to read this, it's right. great. Right. And it sounds like a little cheesy, but you know what? But is it true? It works, because if I told somebody, look, you got to change this or that about yourself, most people will right. shut down or not accept the information. But if I gave them the book, and the book will tell them this, right. they would be accepted in a different way. You know? True. 
You so become I, you become in five years the people you associate with and the books and you the read. Books you read. There you go. I said, uh, when, when you were telling me this, it's, I let's say you say, listen, Orlando, you shouldn't do a, an interview with a with a striped suit, right? Suit. Uh, and I might take it in the wrong way, and you might you might mean it in the best Correct. best best Correct. way. But if you give me a book that says, you know, I'm an expert on this, and I've done the research, and right. uh, I found out that wearing striped suits, uh, you know, are not good for interviews, interviews. then yeah. I would immediately just cool. take it off. So, I mean, that's a great, great point you make with, with the a, book. So It's an interesting concept. It's very, very interesting. You certainly want to try to apply it to yourself. <laughs> <laughs> Buy the book for yourself. <laughs> and as a matter of fact, there is a guy, I don't remember the name, but this is a guy that has over 1 million followers on Facebook and Twitter. And uh, he reads one book per day, and then he does the uh, uh, wow. Ty Lopez. This is his name. Ty Lopez. Ty Lopez. Uh, one book per day. Reader. One one book per day, and he does the summary of the book every, every single day. day. Wow. Amazing, amazing, wow. and it's very interesting. Guy. Imagine what kind of person he becomes ten years from five, oh, ten years just, from now. This is unbelievable. He's an ins- walking yeah. encyclopedia. And he say, he says, and he, I was listening to him this morning actually, and he said, "How I, I do seminars, right?" and uh, I ask people, okay, yeah, let's say he didn't, he didn't want to mention uh, a book in particular, yes. but he mentions a very popular book and New York Times bestsellers, right? And most people raise their hand. Yes, I read it. Um, but when he asks, how many people have read uh, Made in America by uh, Sam Walton? Let's say if you are into business, Excellent. and one person will say, just one person. Yes. Uh, and this, listen, you're, you should read from people that are very successful at it, uh, very, very successful at it, instead of taking adv- uh, advice from people that are, and no disrespect to any professor at all, because I'm way pro-education, but you know, from the people that have the experience and the success. Right. So books are a great, great tool. I don't know if you, um, if you guys are into technology, but uh, there is, uh, you know, there is different tools. You know, LinkedIn and, mm-hmm. and Twitter. That's one, but that was one of my questions. And, uh, Do you have any internet resource or technology that you use? Absolutely, huh? absolutely. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I'm a LinkedIn subscriber. Okay. Well. Okay. And I follow people on Twitter and LinkedIn that I feel that are interesting, that okay. are entrepreneurial. Give you some examples, Richard Branson. Right, definitely. Virgin definitely. Atlantic, oh, Virgin amazing. Galactic. Yeah. And yes. I mean, he's the yeah. serial entrepreneur. Yes. Um, People like Elon Musk, you know, Tesla. Definitely. I mean, yes. these are captains of industry yes. leaders, and they may not, or may or may not be in the real estate business, but you can certainly learn from their, mm-hmm. from their thinking, from their thinking pattern. Mm-hmm. Um, there's a very good resource. There's a, there's a, a application called TED. I'm sure you've seen it. Yeah, TED, TED Talk. TED Talk. Yes. Yeah, the TED videos. Talks are fantastic. Yes. I mean, you can see. Um, leaders, captains of industry, uh, people of influence around the world, and you can pick your topic. Mm-hmm. And usually, you gain a great deal of wisdom mm-hmm. and knowledge by investing, you know, 15, 20 minutes, yeah. maybe half an hour, definitely listening yeah. to uh, somebody like that. Yeah. Now we have uh, Audible. I don't know if you do that. Uh, Audiobooks, uh, they're amazing. And there's yeah. a website called audible.com, and many books. I mean, while you're exercising, running, uh, laying down in bed, and you don't want to read, whatever. I'm shaving every day. And I'm listening to podcasts. I'm listening yeah. to a, to an audiobook, and that's extra 15 minutes that I have. I get into the car. I hardly listen to a to a radio uh, to the radio because there's so much wealth of information out there that is relevant you do, to your you topic. Do things that add to your, add to your life, and it doesn't right. have to be about business only. It can be about health. It can be about <coughs> religion, yes. spirit, whatever it is. But I mean, whatever so, area makes you grow. I, exactly. There's so much technology available for you for free. I mean, that it's, 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 you know, it's, it's, it, would, it would be a shame not to use it. Correct. So, the book, so those two books. Now, how do you define success? Huh. <laughs> it's certainly not the end of the road. Okay. I mean, a, we, we already found that out. Okay. Because, you know, uh, most people think success is mm-hmm. just, you know, uh, acquiring something mm-hmm. or, or getting somewhere. And the reality is uh, you learn with time and uh, experience that success is the pursuit of success Mm -hmm. is the every day waking up and feeling good about what you do and learning and and the being in the pursuit of success is success success is the pursuit of success success is the pursuit of success because it's like everything else once you work for it and you acquire it it'll give you pleasure for about 15 seconds exactly and then there's no more pleasure anymore because you already achieved it so Mm -hmm. the achieving you know the the working towards achieving Mm -hmm. is really the success part mm-hmm. that you are enjoying this process. Sometimes it's adverse, sometimes it's not, but it is what it is. Mm-hmm. And 
you have to wake up every morning and be thankful, you know, have an attitude of gratitude. There you go. <laughs> and, uh, you know, we live in a beautiful free country. We live in a special city ourselves. Mm -hmm. And I go out every morning from my door thanking yeah, God that, yeah. you know, we're here and we have this opportunity. Right. And uh, go chase your dreams. Right. <laughs> now, let me ask you, if you had, if I ask you, what would one piece of advice, or not advice, is that I recommended a, a daily habit, a daily mm -hmm. practice to achieve that success, what would you say would be one daily thing that you One do? daily habit yes. for achieving success. Yes. There are many. <laughs> there are many. There are okay. many. There are many. Well, go back the to the quote. Go back to? To your quote. Right? Okay. <laughs> what was the quote? It's persistency? On, uh, persistency and consistency is yeah. omnipotent. Yeah. Um, just, uh, you know, wake up every morning and, uh, and, and uh, just do what you have to do to follow your plan, basically. Um, I have other ingredients, you know, that I could add to that. You know, I'm, uh, I'm a believer in God, so I'm not a church-going person, but okay. I'm a believer in God. So there is a percentage of praying inside okay. my day, okay, and good. it's a very yeah. personal yeah, thing. And I don't mean to impose on anybody on any beliefs or religion, but that's just me. Now, to end up the, uh, the, the conversation today, if you had one piece of advice for a new agent, what would it be? One piece of advice. For a new agent. What I would say to you is that if you're a new agent, what you need to do first is basically, besides learning all the technical stuff that anybody can learn this, there's enough knowledge and training out there that if you have the will to learn it, you learn it. Uh, what I would say, most people make the mistake of not making a list. And I would say this to you, sit down and make a list of everyone you know and make sure in somehow you shape way or form, you, you try to communicate to these people that you are in the real estate business mm -hmm. and let them know that you're in the business. Because many people just contact their friends and family, but they don't professionally go through a list. Professionally, that's a key point. Yeah, you key have to word. do a list, a mm -hmm. big list, I would say 100 names if you can. And you say, oh, but this person doesn't know me, doesn't say, listen, pick up the phone, say hi to them, mm -hmm. ask them how they are, how their family is, how's their life, you haven't talked. And I just wanted to let you know, tell them that I am in the real estate business. In case I can be of any help to you or to anybody you know, I'm here to serve you or to help you. And leave it at that. And if you talk to 100 people, trust me, you're going to run yeah, into somebody who will. will know somebody or they're in currently interested in buying or selling or doing something besides your friends and family. Because if you don't have a big enough list, and the people who are surrounding you don't want to do anything right now, like they're 90% of what they want to right. do later, you're going to be a little frustrated. Right. So you need to have a bigger list right. to, I guess, jumpstart your business, right. if you will. And that's what we do. It's in, in coaching, we always say it's the database. Uh, right. The most important aspect of all your business, it's increasing, building that database, but more importantly, strengthening the relationship right. with that database. Right. And that's something not only we have not only we are available to our client to, to your clients you have to make an offer when you call them there has to be something concrete that you need to offer to them and uh, and make sure that that it's something of interest right. so uh, what about experience agents because i asked you just to finish uh, the, the interview today and i like the point you touch when i asked you what advice would you give to an experienced agent and you said well, there remember were, there what you were said? Two, there were two things okay right? because we discussed one but then my okay. daughter said another one okay and i actually think both uh, have merit okay okay um what i would say is uh, for an experienced agent if you have been in the business let's say 10 15 years or more like i have you want to stay in touch with technology i mean you want to learn on facebook you want to learn instagram you want to learn twitter you want to learn everything you can and stay you know with your your uh, intelligent phone somehow in touch, don't fall behind. Many agents, when they become experienced, they start falling behind the technology. Right. And you know what? The young guys that are coming, they're more <laughs> savvy and more experienced. They work twice as hard. Mm -hmm. You know, you need to be up to the times, you know, computers and all of that. And, you know, if you don't know how to handle them, you know, get your kids to help you. The, 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 they're the ones who <laughs> help me, you know. I, I use Instagram, you know, <laughs> what you do. And you may think it's not important, but I tell you, it's very important because you are, you know, the mainstream is going that way, not going the traditional way. And if you're not going the direction where everybody's going, well, you're going to yeah. miss the boat. Yeah. You know? And the other one? The other one was that I think that it's totally, totally a must that you build a team long term. You must, if you want to attain a level of 
um, and achieve a level of uh, sales and you want to be significant in the marketplace and you want to have some numbers, you can do it on your own. You only have 24 hours a day mm -hmm. and you can do so much. But once you learn to build a team and to leverage yourself, and that may be initially just to have uh, an assistant or maybe just to have, you know, uh, some junior agents working with you and, you know, in some shape or form, you have to develop a team. Our team in particular is an overseas team. Mm -hmm. Most of our team is not here in Miami, it's in other countries. That was our strategy. Mm -hmm. But you can do it in different ways. But most successful agents that have significant volume out there, all of them have teams. They don't do it on I their own. I completely agree it with you. It doesn't exist uh, on There's no own. way. And even if you could do it, it's not worth it. No, it's not worth it. You would it. have it's no uh, lifetime. I, I was all. telling you, I, I work less hours today mm -hmm. than I ever have and produce more money than I ever have, not because I'm smarter, but because I have a team. Exactly. It was smart to put together a team in place you and saw you it duplicate not a, your efforts. Yeah. You saw it not as an expense, but you saw it as, as an investment. As an investment. Very good. Paul Getty said, and this is out of a book, okay. Okay. that I prefer 100, uh, I prefer 1% uh -huh. of the efforts of 100 people uh -huh. than 100% of my efforts. <laughs> that's a direct quote out of one book. I don't remember which one. There you one. go. But there it's you leveraging. It's, it's leveraging. It, You're there leveraging you yourself yeah, and exactly. your knowledge. Right? And that's what, we, uh, what we're doing. So say it again. I prefer 1% uh -huh. of the efforts of 100 people uh -huh. than 100% of my there efforts. There you go. And that was Paul Getty. Who happened to be the richest guy <laughs> in the world at this, during mean, his time. There you go. Tom. Thomas, Orlando, thank, Thomas you so much. thank you very much thank for, having, for, for, for being here. I appreciate nice it and you. I hope you enjoyed this uh, interview as much as I did. Again, thank you thank for you. another edition of uh, Top Producer Miami with the Montiel Organization. Have a great day. Thank you.